I'm here to show you the 16 mistakes you absolutely need to avoid to make the most out of Photo Room. What is Photo Room? It's a photo editor app that you can create designs with. And you're gonna see in mistake number four about how people don't realize there's free cloud storage with Photo Room. Or mistake number 15, that there's a secret custom prompt tool that you can have any background you want. But we're gonna start off with mistake number one, which is using regular backgrounds instead of AI backgrounds. Here's what I mean. We're gonna have this mug and I'm gonna show you how you could just have a regular beach background from Photo Room, but there's something way better. Let's just take a picture of this mug right here. Let's say you wanna sell this on Etsy or eBay or anything like that. So now you see my screen and I'm just gonna drag and drop the mug that we just took together. So you see there's a backgrounds tab, might be a little bit misleading, but you actually don't wanna click on the background tab. Look at this screen right now, it, this picture is so flat, but if you click on instant backgrounds, which is Photo Room's AI tool, they will automatically have context to wear backgrounds with shadows and everything. And now I'm clicking on outdoor Christmas tree and look how much better this picture is. It's insane. We had this really boring wood paneling and now we have this perfect Christmas shot. So mistake number one, don't click on the background tab, click on the instant background tab for whatever. Now, mistake number two, and this one's a bit less obvious, but it comes to taking your pictures so that they look good on instant background. When you go on your phone, you'll probably have a couple options. One of them is wide angle, and one of them is 1x, 2x, 3x, depending if you have a, a telephoto camera. I always recommend for photos to use a telephoto if you can, because the pictures look a lot better, and I'll show you right now, this is what a wide angle looks like, and you'll see the difference. And Photo Room's really good, it'll remove the background and be context aware and everything, but you don't have the same quality. It's a very subtle thing that I always do when I'm shooting, but what happens basically is the wider you are, the wider the picture is, and if you have a telephoto lens, it compresses it. It matches your normal eyesight better than when you have the wide angle lens. That's why stuff looks warped. So the second mistake is using wide angle for your product shots and uploading them to Photo Room. It can look not so great, whereas the telephoto ones that you see on the screen right now, it looks way better. Mistake number three is using regular shadows instead of AI shadows. Here's what I mean. Here, I've got a perfume bottle. So what I wanna do is, instead of just adding the shadow tab here, which kinda looks a bit dull, we're gonna click instant shadows, we're gonna click hard. And here, this is really cool now, you see the shadow actually matches the shape of the perfume bottle. And you have three different AI shadows available. You have soft, hard, and floating. And these are, and you can see if you move around the object, it actually adds a little contour around it to make it really realistic. Again, don't just use uh, the regular shadows tool, use the AI shadows for really nice effects. Mistake number four is using the default size for segmentation. And this is really something you do on the app. So if we go back to our mug example, we drag and drop the mug in and it automatically takes up a lot of space on the screen. And sometimes you want that look, but sometimes you want to showcase the background a bit more. You want to make it less prevalent. So you can actually drag and drop and move your object around just like I'm showing you right now. And then you can click uh, content has changed, click here to refresh, and it'll redo it for you with that uh, context. And so now if you look at the screen, we went from the big one to a small one that also looks good. Great. Mistake number five is if you're a seller and you have 10 pictures of your shirt that you wanna sell, the worst thing you can do is remove each one manually. Well, there's actually a secret tool called batch mode, not so secret, that lets you automatically remove the backgrounds for several things. On the phone, it's the middle tab or on the web. And all you gotta do, and we'll drop our two images, is that you can see it removes the backgrounds for all of them. And you can also add uh, instant backgrounds or instant shadows. So if I want to add the hard shadow to everything, I've got that. Or if I want to add the volcano effect to all of my images, I can also do that on the web. So if you want to have that wood paneling for your jewelry, you can take tons of pictures of it everywhere, drag them and drop into batch mode on Photo Room, and then have your images. So mistake number six, not realizing that you can sync your phone with your laptop. You might think you have to send it via email or send it via Slack or airdrop it, you don't, okay? This is a mistake I've made so many times, but it's so useful. 
is you go to photo room, go to your content and go to designs. And then here you can see all of your designs are in here. My, you see my candle designs are here and then on my computer right now, you can see my designs as well. So it's a great way to access anything you want here and there. And mistake number seven is something that I didn't do until a month ago is that you can have teams. So I work with a couple people making photos and on the app, there's a little drag and drop where you can click on all of your teams. On desktop, you have create team at the bottom and you can invite people so that not only can you sync your work across devices, but you can also sync your team's work. So you can see what your editor is working on, what your other designer is working on, and they can see what you're working on. So using the team feature to work with other people. Mistake number eight is not using the template feature and redoing all of your designs from scratch. So let's create a design right now. Let's say we want to create a pottery class with the mug that we're using. So I'll quickly show you that. So here I'm going to add some text saying pottery class and we're going to resize the mug and we're going to add a, we're going to add a regular background of something simple and just a date and time. Now what I want to do with my template is now we have a mug, but let's say next week I do this and I want to add something else. Cool. So we have our design now. Now you can actually save this as a template. It's not very obvious, but the, in the top right corner, you see the three dots, click turn into template. And now we're going to say pottery class template. And I've just made this. And so what does that mean? That means whenever I add a new image now, okay, we've got a candle here. So it automatically re can replace the image for you. So now let's say we're making candle holders instead of mugs. Now I've got the, the candle one ready to go. And then you can just go in and change the date to whatever you want. And that was mistake number eight. Mistake number nine. Okay, this is a very obvious mistake that I've made so many times and it sounds dumb, but when you create a creation on your phone, you need to export the photo. So once you have your design done, you have to click save image. So when you click export, it does not actually export. It's a bit misleading, but click export and then save image. And now it saves to your design and it saves to your camera roll. Just the export button does not actually export it. Very easy mistake to make. And if you're on the computer, you just have to click download and that does it. And that brings me to number 10. This is a really, really silly mistake that people make, but if you want a transparent background, you cannot save in JPEG. If you download this as a JPEG, look what happens. You just have a black screen in the end. Don't do that. If you have a transparent background, you have to save as a PNG or WebP. And that you'll see on my screen right now is a transparent screen so that if it's overlaid on something else or on another file, you'll be able to see the background. Mistake number 11 is not realizing that Photo Room gives you access to hundreds of images and like emojis and icons for you to decorate. So most people think it's just photo editing, it's not. On the computer, you can go to insert tab and here you can have all different types of shapes uh, and this can help you uh, give you a little discount or something, 50% off. And so here you'll see, we'll add the shape. We'll change this to 50%, we'll make it white. And so here I'm gonna send this to the back and then put the text bigger. And so now we have our 50%, we've added it. And let's say we wanna add emojis because we really wanna hype up this pottery class. So you can just go in, insert emojis, and you can also insert uh, anything you want, but we'll insert, uh, let's say this woman is hosting it and we're going to put her in the back. We can change the size. So basically having the insert, most people don't realize you have all these images you can use for your creations. And number 12, only using the default fonts in your designs. So if we go back to our, uh, pottery class, most people just use the fonts that you have, but there's actually over a hundred fonts that you can use. So I really like uh, Leto is one of my, I just like how it looks. It gives it a very professional feel. So really, you've got some really cool fonts that you can use. So explore the fonts feature. Don't just use the first one. 
three more not using the before and after slider. So this is one of my favorite features that I was talking about earlier. Let's look at this picture that I took uh, last week. It was for a Christmas or ornament to make it look good. You can go on. So it was actually taken on my desk. Can you believe that? It looks so real here. So the before and after slider is the mistake that people don't realize. And it's just a cool thing to do to see how awesome your pictures look. Two more mistakes. There is a secret custom prompt tool when you're doing the AI backgrounds. So on the web, let's say we have our pottery class and guess what? It's hosted on Mount Etna, which is the largest active volcano in Italy. Um, but we're not actually in Italy or in Sicily, are we? So we're gonna do a custom background by, you'll see, clicking instant backgrounds first, then create a background, then saying a mug on a volcano. Very simple. And we'll just generate this. And here you go, we've got this amazing shot of our mug on top of a little rock with a volcano in the background. And you did this without going to Sicily, although it's a nice place to go to. <laughs> So our last tip today, number 16, is not using the resize tool. So if you're on Instagram or on YouTube, you know, they have different formats. One is nine by 16 and the other one's 16 by nine. So if we're gonna resize to YouTube, you go on the web, click the resize button, which has a little crop icon, and you can click YouTube cover. And here it'll automatically reformat it for you so you can easily export it. And if you wanna redo the instant backgrounds, you can do that, it'll automatically regenerate it and move all of your text. So a really nice feature is you don't have to worry about your text being in the wrong place because Photo Room is smart enough to move it for you. So here you go, you see we've redone our Pottery Class logo and now we have have it on the landscape format. Those were 16 mistakes to avoid when using Photo Room. You're gonna be such a pro now. And these are all mistakes that I've made over the last year using Photo Room Daily. If you have any requests for features, comment them below. We'll send them to the developers directly. Click on one of our other videos here to keep watching Photo Room. Thank you so much. These have been the 16 mistakes you need to avoid when using Photo Room. And I will see you in the next video.